there. I'm Cindy Linden, and this is a Cook Along Podcast Quick Bite. I want to tell you about my making dinner last night and how it came about. I had a jar of Trader Joe's Autumnal Harvest Creamy Pasta Sauce. And this is one of the few jarred sauces I would absolutely advocate for. It's so good. And while it has tomato in it, it's not the main flavor profile. It's got butternut squash and pumpkin puree and heavy cream and carrots and butter and dried onion and dried garlic and parsley and black pepper, rosemary, just a little cayenne to give it a little pop, a little tiny bit of heat and some ground sage. It's really good stuff. And I was looking for something easy and quick and I wanted to use this jar of sauce. And what I had in the fridge was some fresh broccoli, some fresh red bell pepper, and I thought that was all I had. So as I was thinking about putting it together, I thought, well, what could I add that would put protein in here? Because right now the only protein is going to be in the whole grain pasta I'm using, and that's not going to be very much. So what could I do? And I thought, well, I like nuts with pasta. So what kind of nuts would I put in? And I thought about it and I decided because I had some sticking around and because nothing else sounded quite right, that I would try some peanuts. If that sounds bizarre to you, it doesn't surprise me. It sounded bizarre to me too. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought that peanuts might go with all that squash kind of stuff. So I got them out. And I had everything sitting out, and then I started my pasta cooking in the way that I have talked to you about, the quick way, which you can hear about in my Quick Bite podcast called Packaged Pasta Prep. You can also find it in a blog on my website, thecookalongpodcast.com, called You Don't Know How to Cook Pasta. But that is not the point here. The point is that after I chopped up my vegetables and opened my jar of sauce, I did an experiment. I also opened the package of peanuts and I smelled the sauce. I just took a deep breath and then I smelled the peanuts. Then I got them as close to each other as I could so that I could go back and forth really quickly in smelling the two different things. And I still was on the fence about it. I thought, well, hmm, they don't really smell like they go together, but they don't necessarily smell like it would be a bad mix. So I kept them out. And then I went and opened my refrigerator and I just poked around. What else have I got? Have I got any more vegetables? I didn't. Have I got any more loose proteins in here that I could throw in? I didn't. What I did find was a half a container of ricotta. So it was about a cup's worth. And I thought, well, now that might be interesting. Although the sauce already has heavy cream in it. But still, what if I added the ricotta to it? So I took the ricotta over to the jar of the sauce. And I took the lid off the ricotta. And I held them both as close together as I could. And I moved my nose back and forth quickly above it, inhaling to get the scent of the two together. And I decided that was a really good mix. And much better than the peanuts. At which point... I eliminated the peanuts from the recipe I was making and used the ricotta. The result was lovely. It really was quite good. But the point is not what the finished product was, but about how I got there. What I'd like to encourage you to do next time you're unsure about what ingredient to use is to use your nose. You can look at the jar and see it says paprika or it says uh, steak seasoning. And you can think about whether that seems like something that might work with what you're doing. You can also read the ingredients on the back. For instance, the steak seasoning, you'd find that it has onion bits and garlic and black pepper and those kind of things in there. And you can consider whether those things might be good for your sauce. But I think you'll find it much easier and much faster to let your nose do the questioning. So open that jar of steak seasoning and hold it close to what you're cooking. If it's a sauce, if it's a gravy, if it's a cheese thing, if it's potatoes or vegetables or chicken stew or beef stew, it doesn't matter. If you have most of the ingredients at hand, 
and you're trying to decide whether to add that one more thing or what one more thing might be needed in that recipe to make it really good, use your nose. So you smell over the pot that you've got going, and then you hold the spice you're considering, for instance, we were talking about steak seasoning, as close to the pot as you can get, and you move your nose back and forth, and your nose will tell you if things don't go together. Your nose will also tell you how well things might go together. You'll get information that will register in your brain as either this is a good blend or no, this is a really bad idea. I really believe that that's true. It is certainly for my nose something that works. I have come to trust my sense of smell implicitly when it comes to cooking. So if I'm trying to decide to add something to any dish, or even just considering what I'm gonna put together in a dish, I open the jars and I use my nose. Does this need curry or does this need cumin? Does this need garlic or does this need shallots? Does this need a Chinese five spice seasoning or does this need a French four spice seasoning? I trust my nose to tell me. If I put garlic and chocolate next to each other, and close my eyes and just inhale, I trust that my nose will tell me those two things don't go together, at least for my palate. If I put garlic powder and onion powder next to each other, I trust my nose to tell me that they will go well together. This podcast is really about encouraging you to cook by smell. I think it allows a certain amount of experimentation and adventure in your cooking while still keeping a sort of safety net provided by your nose, because it's going to tell you that you don't want mint extract in your spaghetti sauce. It's going to tell you that you don't want maple extract in your cherry pie, that you'd be better off with almond. All you have to do is smell it. It doesn't even take logic for crying out loud. I mean, except for the basic stuff. And don't be afraid to experiment. For instance, nutmeg and cardamom. You may think of those as baking ingredients, but try a little sniff of that sometime when you're cooking something savory. And you may find that your nose says, huh, a little bit of that would be kind of intriguing in here. If it doesn't belong, trust your nose to tell you that. And once you've gone out on that limb to try something that you didn't know you were gonna put in it, you can start cautiously and then just taste Use a tiny little spoon that's not going back in the pan after you use it and taste it and see if the flavors go together. And if the new profile works, then you can choose whether to put in a little more. The nutmeg and the cardamom, probably you don't need a lot. They're very strong flavors and they will influence the flavor of things without overpowering it as long as you just put in a little. Something like Beaumont, or Chinese five spice, or steak seasoning, those things you may find that you want a little more of once you discover, by smelling and tasting, that the flavors go really well together. You know, after you add that ingredient, you can use your nose then too. You smell it and you think, can I smell what I just put in, first of all, because if not, you probably didn't add enough. And secondly, do the smells still go together? You may get led wrong once in a while, but mostly your nose is a trustworthy thing. So try and experiment this week. Try cooking something with a new ingredient. And don't plan out what that ingredient is. After you start cooking and you have some things to smell, the fresh tomatoes and fresh onions or the freshly cooked squash, just start poking through your spice cabinet and then start opening jars and smell them together side by side and see what speaks to you. Check back here next week for a brand new recipe podcast. Those are every other week and the quick bites are in between. Check the website, thecookalongpodcast.com to search for fun recipes to try and to see photos and ingredient lists for all of those recipes. Share with one of your friends the podcast of a favorite recipe that we may have cooked together. And until next time, happy cooking. Happy cooking.